five, four. Wait, 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 wait. Green beer. Whatever. Fucking St. Patty's Day. Doesn't gotta be much. You don't got much. You didn't really do anything. You drank green beer. It's just food coloring. It's just a drop of food coloring. And that's and that's it. That's all really there is how you to make, do. What other green beer is there besides Heineken? The Heineken's not green, Mike. <laughs> it's just the green bottle. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the fifth episode of the Fat Statters Podcast. This is brought to you by Fat Stats. We analyze the game of football, American football, and we try and do it in the most entertaining way possible. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, medium.com for any readers. We have this up on SoundCloud. We also have a YouTube channel. You can find us everywhere. Fat underscore team stats is the handle. I am Bobby, and this is Mr. Mike Papa. What's going on? And we grade the quarterbacks, right? We also do a lot more than that, but, you know, we grade. Uh, that's one of our big... Uh, our big. Um, it's our high point. Yeah, you know? it's our, our bread and butter, you Ooh, could say. I can go for some nice hot loaf of bread right now with some butter. Yeah. Sounds good right now. Keith. Well, no butter. No butter. Just straight hot bread. I don't think he likes it hot. No. I feel like it's just straight. Chicago hard rolls. No, they're hard. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a friend that only drinks or only eats uh, bread and french fries, potatoes. But he's healthy as an ox. Healthy as can be. So back to what we're going to be talking about today is the NFC South. And this division had three playoff teams. Some good, you know, some good quarterbacks in this league, you'd think. This is the NFC South. Saints, Bucks, Falcons, Panthers. And I said it in that order because that is the order in which the QBs ranked this year, or our past 2017 regular season, when we just ranked and graded those quarterbacks. It's funny that... The one team, the second team, uh, the Bucks, did not make the playoffs. Though they're second in our quarterback ranking, team wise. That's funny. But they, well, it's not funny. It's just you would think that they'd be last because they didn't make the playoffs. Well, mm-hmm. you wouldn't think that, but you'd think Jameis would be last. But he didn't play all the games. No, he missed four. And he did have. He had an injury, so even when he played as well, he was nursing this an injury. Nonetheless. He still he improved, and we'll get to that. We'll talk to that. All right. I just know you want to you want to jab at Jameis. No, it, it's completely different between you and Marcus and Jameis and I. I like Jameis. Throw that out there. And I like Jameis too. All right. Well. So, Drew Brees. Let's just jump right in. Drew Brees, New Orleans Saints. <clears throat> they re-signed him, Mike. Two years, fifty million dollars. I was surprised they are actually going to let him go. Like, why? For what? Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know if they were going to really let him go. Were they? They just trying to figure out. Because Drew was like, I don't want to go anywhere else. Saints were like, yeah, we ain't having you go anywhere else. I mean, he is still a top three quarterback in the league. Hands down. You could even say top two. You could say top two. You could say top two hands down. Yep, based on our fat grades, 2016. He ranked second, right behind A. Raj. This year, 2017, second again behind Russell Wilson. He played out of his mind throughout the whole season. I mean, he was, he is the most consistent quarterback last year, right? And we rank consistency based on we we use what is called the coefficient of variation. Okay, it is a statistical term. And what it does is it is looking at his grades every single week, his points per play, and it's basically saying how far off from his average is it every single week, right? So the variation, how wide range of scores does he get every week? He's number one, meaning he is very steady 
27% or a 0.27 was his score, which means he's 27%, you know, variation. That's really good. He was number one. Well, it's interesting uh, because if we were to have Jimmy G, uh, which actually would, if he was included in our grading, but he wasn't because he didn't play enough games or had enough plays, Jimmy G was actually first in consistency, but he only played in five games. Yeah. Was it five games? So he had 10% consistency, which is a big difference, uh, but in only five games, I mean, you can't really compare the two, which is why Drew Brees is, is first. Yeah, good point. Yeah, one of the things that's a good point, Mike, because everything we do, we are limiting the quarterbacks to <clears throat> they must have had at least 300 scorable plays, right? So Aaron Rodgers is not in there, Jimmy G, a Consi- lot of these other quarterbacks. Deshaun wise, Watson. 300 plays. Yeah, for correct. For the right. Rangers. Good yeah. point. Um, yeah, but fact rate, he had a second, he, he was second behind Russell Wilson. He had an 86.9. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not much to say. He played so well. Having Alvin Kamara on the team helps a lot. Uh, and that's what, I mean, he ranked, what was it? He ranked number three, uh, at passes completed at or behind the line of scrimmage. So 30% of his completions were at or behind the line of scrimmage, and a lot of that was to Alvin Kamara. Yeah, Alvin Kamara, then Mark Ingram, and then also you can throw screen passes to Michael Thomas. Right. So, uh, yeah, the short game, th- that's that's their bread and butter is that is. short game. Mm-hmm. You know, and they do it really well. But he also he also threw it deep a lot too, right? Yeah. Oh, so on the other end of it, right? Yes. He, he, he ranked third in passes at or behind the line of scrimmage. He also ranked sixth in 20 or more air yards downfield. So the depth in which his throw is 20 or more air yards. It's funny because I, I feel like he threw it deep and short to two players mainly, Kamara and Michael Thomas. Because mm-hmm. you can see Kamara going, you know, running a fly. Oh, yeah. And he, like it's nothing. Yeah, they had him, they had him out wide a, a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, having that tool at his disposal, I mean, Drew Brees is an excellent decision maker. And great instincts in the pocket. I mean, it's Drew Brees. There's not much you need to even say. But adding those weapons made a world of a difference. And then what they did in the draft and were able to sign in free agency to make that defense come together, that team is going to be scary this mm-hmm. next year. So um, another thing, too, just to, to point in there, uh, you know, just a random stat here. He was the most accurate quarterback based on how we – uh, calculate accuracy. So our true accuracy, he was number one, seventy four point one percent. It does help a lot, you know, throwing behind the line. But either way, he was six thrown deep, so he he was is very accurate at throwing the ball. He's definitely a top three, top two quarterback in the league, still. And I I, I don't see him dropping off next year at all. I'd be surprised if he does. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, they did sign. Let's see, who did they sign in free agency? Well, they got your boy Tom Savage just to back him up. Tom Savage. Now, it's not he's not my boy. Let's just I'll I just wanted to say, I mean, he had a great week. He had a great performance uh for the Texans. I forgot who it was against. It was towards his and towards the I forgot who it was against, but he had a great week and I was just I was just saying, you know, just don't hate on the man from that week. I mean, he's not great, but well, he's only he had a great he's week. only in his fourth season or There it was. No. He had a 90.5. He was number one. That week? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, so. Wait, do you, have, do you have the team he played? Right there? Uh, I don't. Okay. Anyway, Tom Savage is a great backup quarterback. Uh, if something were to happen to Drew, I don't see anything happening to him. He's in his 18th season, still playing strong. It was at Tennessee. <laughs> was it really? Just wanted to say. Shocker. Can't, can't defend against Texans quarterbacks, apparently, last year. That's why we signed Malcolm Butler. But anyway, so the they actually added two new pieces to their defense. Um, Patrick Robinson from the Eagles and Jamaro Davis from the Jets. Two were top quality uh, free agents that they picked up. So, I mean, I, I feel like it, if that defense can continue to play the way they did, which I don't see why they wouldn't, it, sh- it might even get better. Um, we'll see what they do in the draft. That offense is still going to be just as good. Uh, I mean, they're, I feel like they're definitely going to make the playoffs again next year. It's going to be tough for them not to. Yeah, it's going to be super exciting to watch. Yep. 
We'll see where Alvin Kamara gets drafted and fantasy. Ooh, that's, yeah. Top 10? He might Maybe. be overdrafted, though. Someone will draft him high for sure. Overdraft. But what a steal. Move on to your boy now, though. Yeah. This, this is your boy. Jameis Winston. One of the greatest leaders in the NFL. Great motivator. He might have done some things in front of the camera that just looked a little weird, but it was all in good spirit. Um, he's just one of the, you know, one of the greatest leaders in the NFL. Besides that, though, we got to look at the numbers. All right. Let's see how we did. Mm-hmm. He improved. The headline for Jameis is we know what he is. He's a gunslinger. He loves to take chances, loves to try and make the big plays. It is a gift and a curse because he does not shrink in big moments. He does not shy away from that. At the same time, he makes a lot of mistakes. And he improved year over year. So 2016, he had a 67 fat grade out of 100. Not very good. It was like 30th. Correct. I, I uh, right. 27th. 27th, okay. This year, 77.3. So he improved 10 grade points, right? Mm-hmm. And number 11. Mm-hmm. He was almost in our top 10. He got injured. Only played 12 games. Only played 12 games, right? And he, when he came back, I don't know how much of the shoulder affected him. Doesn't matter. He did improve. His accuracy was 12th best. 12th best. His true accuracy, 65.6%. That was great. And he, was, he improved his consistency. Okay, He was 13th most consistent in the league, 48%. So... With that being said, we know what Jameis is. He takes chances down the field. Last year, he was either he was one or two. He might have been behind Marcus in air yards, um, total air yards attempted downfield. This year, he was number one. He attempted. He averaged ten point six yard air yards per pass. So every pass is ten point six yards down the field when he completed it he was number one as well 7.97 air yards however he was also number one in pass attempts per interceptable ratio number one in i should say this worse (laughs) he was the worst in the league deshaun kaiser was Better than him. In so this. what was it? Every 17-ish passes he was throwing an interceptable ball? Uh, every 15.5 15. 15. passes. 15.5. So, yeah. Every 15.5 passes, you can expect an interceptable pass from Jameis. That is not good. You know, so when I, when I think of Jameis, uh, I think of Gunslinger for sure. He loves to take his chances. He loves to throw it downfield. And when you have Mike Evans on your team, which I'm glad they resigned him, you take your shots. I mean, you have a playmaker like him on your side. You throw the ball to him and let him make a play. I mean, Jameis and, and, and Mike Evans, like Drew Brees and Michael Thomas, uh, are one of the top tandems in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, and you would have liked to have seen Deshaun Jackson gel in there. I mean, there was some opportunities for them to connect, and Jameis overthrew him maybe. or uh, You would have liked to have seen that come together more. But he's right. He has Braid. They re-signed Braid. And O.J. Howard, that you know, mm-hmm. rookie tight end last year, he's going to really come into his own. They had some weapons. And you can see why. Yeah, he wants to take chances, but he also loses the game for his team. I, I expect him to bounce back. I mean, you can't really bounce back. I mean, he was 11th in the, in the league last year. But I expect him to be around the same or better. I don't really see him dropping off, especially if he stays healthy. Yeah. I mean, another whole, another year under his belt and and another year with Mike Evans and then the offseason and whatnot. So They didn't sign a running back, did they? No, not they, yet. They lost Doug Martin. They have no. They didn't sign a running back yet. They got so they got like Peyton Barber and uh, is Charles Sims? I think Charles Peyton, Sims might Peyton be. Peyton Barber. Agency. They resigned. Okay. They resigned Peyton Barber, and then Sims. I believe they let him go. Yeah, I think so. Or he's just not he signed just yet. free agent. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It'll be interesting. They need a little. They need a weapon out there. For sure, they do. We'll see if they trade. Uh, uh, what pick are they in the draft? I think it was. Um, they're like number five, right? I think they're like uh, six, seven, five. Well, I think four, three, two, one. What? Well, I'm saying I wonder first seven pick. So I'm wondering where 
are they going to trade back or who are they going to go after? Are they going to go after someone in defense? Are they going to try and get Chubb um, on defense? Like, where, where are they going to focus on in in that first uh, first? So they have pick. Se- they have seven. Seven. Okay. They have seven. Are they going to trade back with Buffalo? Buffalo definitely needs to trade up. That's for another day, but I, it's cur- I'm curious to see. You know, I I think it's going to come down to who falls to them, quarterback wise. Maybe um, I mean I don't Barkley's not going to fall that far, but quarterback wise or you know whoever else, I don't think they're going to they're going to trade. But maybe I mean we'll see. Okay. You never know. Yeah. I anticipate this team being in the running for the playoffs though, next year. As long as Winston stays healthy, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see uh, how the draft goes for them. Yeah. All right, so let's go to someone who was hot two years ago, in 2016, and is very icy right now. Matt Ryan. Like a big whistle crash. Yeah. Um... Maddie melting ice, ice Ryan. Maddie melting ice Ryan. Is melting, that his, is that his ice new nickname? Melting. It's his new new nickname, huh? Yeah, he didn't look. Uh, he was not good. He didn't look good. He didn't. He, he. I don't care whether you look at our grades, whether you look at uh, QBR, whether you look at just the gameplay with your eyes. He just was not the same. Well. No, he, from his MVP season, you know, to the season, no, he definitely wasn't the same. But he was 10th best in the NFL in true accuracy with a 65.9%, mm-hmm. which is obviously, you know, top 10 quarterback in the league with that. Consistency, 15th with 52%. My take on Matt Ryan, he's still a top I think he's definitely a top 15 quarterback in the league. I would maybe put him top 10 quarterback in the league still. He just had an off year. I think the team itself had an off year. It wasn't just him. What, what do I see him doing next year? I mean, I feel like he'll definitely improve somewhat from this ranking, 17th. I don't think he'll be 17th. I think he'll finish better than 17th next year. Um, they did lose a receiver in Tyler Gabriel. Um, but, you know, obviously... There's still some free agents to be signed and the draft to go. I just can't see him doing worse again. Going from the last year to this year and getting worse again, I just can't see it. Yeah, I know. I know. And they and they, they went a different adjustment with, you know, their new OC. And mm-hmm. so I don't know. I I agree. I, I don't think he did. He declined. But I don't think it's something that. He he came off an unbelievable season. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I did, I said you know looking at his QBR, he actually did have the fifth best QBR, uh, which is interesting. I and he had the third best pass attempt to intercept interceptable ratio behind Alex Smith and Tyrod Taylor. Um, so he was taking care of the ball. It's just he he just didn't. I guess the offense in general didn't have the the big the wow like they did and you know against you know the last year you know what it was it's just because they that that great season he had and then you know make it the super bowl and then just it just seems like a, such a disappointing season uh, i mean his touchdowns were way down and his interceptions were up but you know you you can't, when, once you get to that level and if you can't maintain that level it just always looks like a huge drop off do falcons make the playoffs next year no. Yeah. Ah, that's tough. That's tough. They always make it. The NFC itself is a tough a tough conference. And, you know, compared to the AFC, I think the NFC is tougher. This division, they had three playoff teams. The Falcons were one of them. I feel like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be close with the Falcons again and, and the Panthers. I, this, I think the Saints are going to win the division again, and then the Falcons will be up there with the with the – with Tampa. It is. It's a, it's a strong division. It is. One of the best in the league. Okay. So anything else on Matt, Matty Ice? No, I don't have anything on him. I mean, he uh, he was just middle of the pack in consistency. And, you know, he, I don't really have anything on him. 
I hope to see him, you know, another year under the belt, under maybe in this new offense or the, you know, the OC being there for another year. Let's see how, how that can develop. Let's see what they do in the draft or maybe in free agency, if there's anything else they have left to do. Um, Cause it looks like they've just, they lost a lot of big pieces. Well, they lost three key players. They lost Gabriel receiver. They lost yeah, you know, Don Terry Poe on the defense and Adrian Claiborne, both on the defense. Yeah. Their defense. So they're, they're, they're going to have a hard time. I think, um, you know, they picked 25th. In, in the draft, but I feel like they're going to have somewhat of a hard time keeping up with the Saints. And then I think the Bucks will ha- probably have a better year. Um, but this is all, you know, off-season talk. Who who the hell knows? No, for sure. They really didn't add anybody special in, in free agency so far. So yeah. they, they lost more than they, they gained. Hmm. Well, so, we'll and they picked 25. So Julio, we'll see. Julio isn't getting any younger. Great point. So hurry it up. But they got two good running backs that I like. So yeah, they do. Devontae Freeman, mm-hmm. go no. Cam Newton, Superman, hasn't been so Superman lately, huh? Yeah, <laughs> he might be. Uh, he might be good for fantasy every now and then with his rushing ability. But as a quarterback, two years in a row now, he has posted a, a below a seventy. So he was number thirty in twenty sixteen. This year he was number. 22. He improved slightly. He had a 63 grade. He went up to a 66. Very slightly. So he was pretty much the same. If, if you, I mean, he, he was, what, what I always know when you're just looking at Cam, always has been an inaccurate quarterback. Always. He just, he's a strong, very strong quarterback. Good on his legs. He likes to try and take deep passes, but he overthrows his wide receivers so much. And it showed uh, 26th in the NFL in true accuracy. There's only three quarterbacks that were worse than him in true accuracy. Mitch Trubisky, Mm -hmm. Jay Cutler, and Deshaun Kaiser. Wow. And that's just what, it doesn't surprise me. He had a 58 point, he had a 58%. But it doesn't surprise me. When it comes to Cam throwing the ball, I feel like he has some of these amazing like throws. It's like how did he get that in there? Like with like no effort at all. But most of the time, yeah, he's just he just seems inaccurate. Yeah, because he has a strong arm. For sure. I mean, it's they, like he can get it in there like it's nothing, and some throws just look so beautiful. But when he does get it together, it is a very beautiful thing to watch. You know, I think those three weeks in the middle beginning of the season, you know, fantasy wise, when he went off. Uh, helped his three points higher grade overall for the year. He really played about the same as last year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, that week five, he had a really great week five. There was the one week against the Patriots. It might have been week five where Mm -hmm. they were going back. That was a great game. Yep. Unbelievable game. That might have been that week. Um, And then he had a great week in week 10. But besides that, meh. Yeah, I mean, his consistency, consistency ranking was 21st. He had 62%. Uh, percent. Mm-hmm. So he's... He, I mean, they got uh, weapons, though. Around. The Panthers The Panthers have... what They got Christian McCaffrey. Well, the thing is, his main, main weapon, Greg Olson, was hurt. Greg Olson was hurt. Funches was his best weapon. I mean, he was somewhat hurt, yeah. too. But Funches played well. They got rid of Calvin. Mm-hmm. So he really didn't have much to throw to. Uh, McCaffrey, though, um, I felt like they probably could have used him a little, a little more, maybe. But he 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 definitely helped somewhat. He's he's a weapon they gotta they gotta use more. I think. Yeah, I mean Curtis Samuel also. It, I mean he he had an injury, but he's a burner. That guy, if, if he can stay healthy this year, and we'll see, he was a rookie last year anyways at Ohio State. If he can really come into to a, a deep threat, Cam Newton loves throwing the ball deep. Remember Ted Ginn? Yeah, he. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he had Ted Ginn all day um, a couple years ago. So this is going to be, it, it'll be good. We'll see how they do. I just don't think the Panthers' defense has always been strong, uh, and if they do make the playoffs, it'll be because of that of the defense. I don't think the offense is going to take a huge step forward, personally. No, I mean they lost Jonathan Stewart, so McCaffrey's their lead guy right now. 
Um, and I think they, they need more help at receiver. And then, I mean, hopefully uh, Greg Olson stays healthy for him. But I don't see that offense doing much. They really didn't, they really didn't do nothing in free agency so far. I mean, they signed two players, a tackle, and they got Dot Terry Poe um, from the Falcons uh, for the defense. But they lost a couple good players, especially they, I mean, lost their, their guard, who the Jags, uh, Andrew Norwell, who the Jags signed for a huge contract. I think top paid guard in the league. Mm-hmm. So they lost a big piece on offense, too. Yeah. So uh, it'll be tough for the, for the Panthers. I think uh, Cam's going to need to play like Superman if they're going to make the playoffs next year. Can he do it? That's the question. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, I don't have anything else to say on Cam. Um, and to be honest, it's a great division. Very fun to watch. All the quarterbacks are strong. Mm-hmm. They might have had some bad, but I mean, they, they're a very strong division. Defenses are great in those in that division. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting to see. Do the Bucks take maybe the Panthers or the Falcons spot in like you know can they get ten wins and maybe go to the playoffs? How many teams from this division do you think make the playoffs? We had three last year. How many teams this year? Um, I could I think three again. You think three teams from this division will make the playoffs? Yeah. Only because I don't see the no two. Okay. Two. So who's your two? Saints. Falcons. Really? I, I was waiting to hear the Bucks. No, I'm not I was gonna just waiting. That's uh you know, I hope they make the playoffs, but it, it's just I don't think they're just I don't think they're there. See, I don't know. I don't I don't know I don't know if it's the coaching. I don't know if it, can they get a really strong running back and start to their defense is you know they had a lot of injuries and in, on the defensive side they had some injuries too um, I don't I just don't see them making that big of a leap but I think they'll make a push. See, I agree with you. I think it's gonna be the Saints. Uh, I think only the Saints is gonna be the only team to make the playoffs. They're gonna win the division and that's it. I don't think there'll be a wild wild card team in this division. If there is, it's gonna be the Falcons and then the Bucks will be close. So you think the Panthers will finish last in the division? I do. Uh, I think they'll still close to five hundred. Huh. I don't. I, I don't. Nine and seven. Say seven and nine. You know, Ooh. give or take a game or two. Yeah. I mean, if you have the fourth fourth place team going nine and seven or seven and nine, that's really good. You're right, though. I only only because there is really some good strong teams. Like Seahawks is going to take. A step back. They didn't make the playoffs, but they're going to take a step back. Cardinals step back. 49ers step forward. Mm-hmm. Um, Packers will have a- Aaron Rodgers back. Detroit Lions are close every year, and I think the they Vikings, make the push. And then the Vikings have Kirk Cousins. You know, they already went, they went 13 and 3. Oh, Vikings will be there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of you're, you're there's right. a lot of quality teams in the NFC. So yeah, only reason why I think the Falcons can make it is because of the experience of that team, um, and because of Matt Ryan and Julio Jones in that running game. Yeah, I think just the Saints are going to make it, but the Fa- Falcons and the Bucks will push for a wild card. I think the the Panthers will be on the losing end, unfortunately. Cool. But who knows? That's this the off season. It's why we talk about it, and you never know what can happen. That's right. You never know. The Saints could be last, for all you know, next year. Hundred percent not going to happen, though. Oh, ninety nine percent. Hundred ninety nine percent. Point nine percent. Yeah. I'm with you on that, though. Anything else, Mike, to add? No, I think that's about it. All right. It's a strong division, and um, see what happens next year. (laughs) All right, cool. All right, so thanks, everybody. This was our NFC South. uh, I guess um, NFC South thing. uh, Wrapping up 2017 season. Thanks, Mike. Um, so basically you can find us on pretty much anywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, again, fat underscore team stats, check it out. Let us know what you think. Um, and that's all I got. Mike. No, that's about it. I think, uh, we covered it all. Adios.